Hello, this is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management and host of the Resney Wealth Report. We have a great show for you this morning. Of course, we are taking your questions. Make sure you send those to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. Again, questions about investing, retirement, your Social Security, pensions, whatever your investment question is, we want to help you get back on track. All people have questions. You want to get the right answer? This is the show for you. By the way, do visit our website, ResneyWealth.com. We have upcoming workshops, how to protect and grow your wealth from bad advice. You can check out our workshop tab, times and availability, and the topics we will discuss. You know, today I want to talk just a little bit about recessions. The next big market correction is coming. What is your risk management strategy? What I will tell you is this. I've been managing money for over 30 years. The vast majority of investors, and I would say 90% of you, have no risk management strategy. You're flying by the seat of your pants. Most Wall Street firms, banks, and insurance companies do what's called asset allocation. You know that pie shows up on your brokerage statement? It's divvied up into 20 or 40 different little pieces. That's asset allocation. It's buy and hold. They might rebalance it once or twice a year, but it's buy and hold. What that means to you is this. You have no risk management strategy. As an example, let's say out of 1 to 10, 1 is a conservative portfolio and 10 is an aggressive portfolio. Let's say you're a 7 portfolio as an example. When you're in these asset allocation pies with these brokerage houses, you're always a 7. They never take a 7 down to a 2 or 3 in a recession. You're always going to be a 7. Meaning, there's times you don't want to own as much equities, and there's times you want to own a little bit more. There's times you want to own less bonds, or maybe more. Maybe gold, maybe real estate, who knows, maybe oil. Different investments are appropriate at different times. But what I'm going to tell you is this. If you are one of those investors, which is probably 90 plus percent of you listening, you have no risk management strategy. You're going to ride things up, and you're going to ride them down again. Statistically, in a recession, the equity markets drop 35 to 50 percent. That's a lot of money. You have a million dollar portfolio, it drops 50 percent. You now have 500,000. Should you have a risk management strategy or should you just buy and hold and subject yourself to excessive volatility when maybe you should do something about it? Plain and simple, this bull market will stay in place until one of two things happen a recession appears on the horizon. And that's often from an overheated economy, people spending too much and can't keep up, um, or the stock market becomes grossly overvalued. We call it the bubble territory like in 2000 or maybe 2008. When things get overvalued, it usually causes the excess, the balloon to pop and things go down. A recession is caused by an overheated economy. We currently don't see signs of that, but in the next six months or the next six years or somewhere between, we could have a recession. What is your risk management strategy? And again, 90 plus percent of you listening today have no risk management strategy. You're gonna ride it up and you're gonna ride it down because you're doing what's called asset allocation. We spend a lot of time on research daily at my firm. Recessions are your biggest risk. Not normal yearly market volatility, but a recession. If you have no risk management strategy, how do you protect your portfolio for major drawdowns. You don't. It's time you get yourself a risk management strategy so that you can help protect and maybe secure your retirement just a little bit more. Right now, the U.S. economy data signs, uh, shows no signs of recession. In fact, the GDP is healthier now than any time in previous, uh, at the previous rally points when we started this whole bull market. We like what we see on the GDP growth. We're probably going to grow somewhere close to 3% this year. And realistically, we have a good chance to grow 3% next year. Those are solid numbers. But remember, anytime in the next three months, six months, or a year and a half, or six years, things could get overheated and we could start rolling over as an economy. And a recession is a normal part of the business cycle. But unfortunately, most investors, again, have no risk management strategy when the next recession comes. And yes, stocks are pretty fairly valued. Not overvalued, fairly valued. What should you be doing right now? Long story short, you should stay fully invested 
in this bull market until the recession appears imminent or stocks become bubblicious or grossly overvalued. Remember, normal inter-year volatility, whether it's in the stock market, the bond market, real estate, gold, all assets do this throughout the year. Normal corrections, 5%, 10% with the equity market happen every single year. Those are acceptable levels. What you should be concerned about is the bigger risk, a recession that pulls your portfolio down 35 to 50%. Do you actually have a risk management strategy or is your portfolio set it and forget it, write it up and write it down? If you're working with a bank, a Wall Street firm, an insurance company, I can pretty much assure you, you've got asset allocation, it's set it and forget it, and unfortunately, that did not work as a risk management strategy in the last two recessions, and I doubt it's gonna work the next time around. Upcoming workshops. If you want to learn more about recessions and how to protect your money, we're going to talk about the disturbing facts most investors are shocked to learn. The true cause of poor investment returns and how you can fix it easily. Learn how to grow and protect your wealth from bad advice. We've got two workshops coming up, one in Fort Myers, one in Naples. Go to ResneyWealth.com. Click on our workshop tab for times and availability and to sign up. We have limited seating always for our workshops. They get booked up fast. It's a must-see, must-attend workshop. You'll glad you did. You'll learn a lot, and you'll learn how to protect your money from bad investment advice. Dana from Michigan. I was tempted multiple times in recent weeks to jump, uh, jump ship on stocks. I'm nervous. What do you think? Dana, you should get better advice in my opinion. People often want to jump ship on the stock market or any investment because either they don't understand the real risks of what they're invested in or they're not invested correctly. If you had a professional money manager who gave you an education about risk and reward, you probably would not be that nervous. I could tell you as a firm, we get virtually no phone calls from nervous clients. The reason, because we, well, we educate our clients well, and we also communicate with them well about what's going on in the economy. Most firms don't do a good job in that. That's what we have found. That's why new clients hire my firm every single month. They like the quality of the communication. If you understand what's happening, you'd be less nervous and probably sleep better at night and be a happier investor over the long term. Bob from Punta Gorda, Florida. What do you think of dollar cost averaging? Bob, great question. Not a fan of dollar cost averaging. This is what I'm gonna tell you. You could either dollar cost average, all it is is taking your money and dividing it up to uh, over a, a period of time, let's say a calendar year, 12 months, and taking a 12th of your money and putting it to work each one of those months. I'm not a big fan. What I like to do is this. We look at where the markets are trending. We look at what investments we're gonna own in a portfolio today based upon hardcore research. If there are good buying opportunities, we like to put that money to work. If we feel maybe there's a short-term pull, pullback coming, maybe we'll stage that money in over the next couple months, but certainly not over a period of a year. Dollar cost averaging to me is kind of, uh, it, it really is not a functional tool in a portfolio. If you're doing proper research, you're looking at your charts, you're looking at where the economy is headed, in my opinion, you're better off to get that money invested if you can get good pivot points or buy points, and I think long-term, you'll be a much happier investor. Overall, go to my website, resneywealth.com. You can download for free three investment risks you must avoid now. If you want to learn some of the mistakes a lot of investors make, you can go to my website, resneywealth.com, download that report, learn a lot of the things that often plague investors, whether it's emotions, whether it's that bad investment advice, whether it's a lack of strategy and risk management. Those are things that hurt your returns, in my opinion, and those are things that hurt your retirement security. Download the report, it's free, you'll be glad you did. I'm gonna take a quick break and I'll be right back with more questions after this. Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. Is your so-called advisor really just an annuity salesman? Bad. Annuities are sold by misleading you, the investor. Sky-high expenses, crazy surrender penalties, and mediocre investments 
rob your returns and rob your security. My advice, stop being sold. If you want real money management, real advice, call my firm today. Hello, we're back. I'm Brian Resney, President of Resney Wealth Management and Chief Investment Officer. We're taking your questions today. If you have a question about your portfolio, retirement, Social Security, whatever your financial question is, send those to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. Get the right answer to your question. You'll feel better. You'll know the direction you should be headed, and you can make better decisions about your portfolio. Let's go to David in Naples, Florida. I started listening to your show recently. I have two questions. I am a very long-term uh, investor at this point. How much should I care about any recession, booms, et cetera, uh, related to my investment strategy? And two, are date-driven retirement funds of value? Let me hit the last one first. These are target date funds you're probably referring to, David. I am not a fan. I don't like them. The expenses are high. These mutual fund companies use their own funds, which a lot of them might not be good, that they basically put this mix together. You're better off to do your own building of your portfolio with quality investments from different sources versus one mutual fund company. So I do not like target date funds, and they box you in a corner. Your first question, though, uh, which is long-term, and you're not really concerned about recessions or booms, you should be. Because I don't care if you're 30 years old, or you're 80 years old. If you can do quality research and you have a risk management strategy around recession, remember folks, normal volatility in the investment markets, whether it's the stock market, the bond market, real estate, all investments inter-year throughout the year will do some of this. You know, if you go back to 2016 as a great example, the equity market in January dropped around 10%, the S&P 500. In the following months, it recouped that 10% loss and then went up to new high ground and actually made around 10% for 2016. Not a bad return. But if you were an investor who couldn't handle any of this, you didn't make the, the net return of 10% by year end. Normal volatility happens all the time in every investment market. You have to accept that. But what you do not and should not accept is just sitting on the sidelines as the economy is doing well, but then starts to get overheated and rolls over into recession. When in a recession, the typical equity market will drop about 35 to 50 percent, often between 12 and 15 months to go to the bottom. So as you're seeing an overheated economy, maybe at that point you want to take an investor who might be a, an eight level risk, and maybe you want to take yourself down to a two or three. I think investors would be wise to have a risk management strategy in their portfolio. You're not making changes drastically. Remember, recessions don't happen every year. You might have a recession on average every six to seven years. So that means every six or seven years or eight years, you're reducing your exposure to risk, hopefully protecting a lot of the downside and basically getting back in when basically the streets, as we call them, are bloody and valuations are dirt cheap at that point and you want to get back in for the next market rally. Remember, in my opinion, buy and hold is a mistake. Blatantly asset allocating and holding your money in a bunch of different investments doesn't really provide you risk management, but doing research around the economy, because remember, how the economy grows or doesn't grow is going to have a big impact on the value of your portfolio. Again, in our estimation, 90 plus percent of investors have no risk management strategy. You got asset allocation, you're buy and hold. That to me subjects yourself to too much risk. We've got two upcoming workshops, one in Fort Myers and one in Naples. I'm going to teach you the disturbing facts most invest investors are shocked to learn. The true cause of poor investment returns and how to fix it. I'm going to teach you how to, you'll learn how to grow and protect your money from bad investment advice. If you're a concerned investor, a pre-retiree or retiree, you should attend one of my workshops. Again, right here in Fort Myers, Naples. Go to ResneyWealth.com, click on our workshop tab for times and availability. It's a must attend for any investor who cares about the value of their portfolio, 
cares about the returns on their money, and cares about their retirement security. Again, go to ResneatWealth.com, click on the workshop tab for times and availability, and to sign up. It's a must attend for all smart investors. Bill from Florida. Hi, I'm 70 years old and currently invested 60% equities. I'm considering selling and buying treasuries. Good idea. Bill, horrible idea. Why do you want to sell your equities to buy treasuries? What is your reason for doing that? Just you wanted to sell something to buy something else. Is that part of your investment strategy? I will say this, the economy is doing well. Equities are on the rise. We're having uh, the overall economy is growing, meaning corporations are selling more, revenues are going up, earnings are going up. Those are positives. Now, that may change in six months or six years or somewhere in between. But, Bill, why do you want to sell one thing to buy something, in my opinion, that's overvalued? Remember, interest rates are being moved up by the Fed. If you buy a lot of treasuries, and depending what kind of treasuries you buy, treasury bonds, you might lose a lot of money as rates go up. Remember, when interest rates go up, bond values go down. So again, why do you want to sell all of one thing? What's the rationale to buy bonds? It doesn't make a lot of sense. What I would suggest, you might want to consider calling my firm for a consultation, a second opinion. We do deal with larger portfolios, 500,000 and greater. You're more than happy to call our office during the week. We'd love to sit down with you and hopefully point you in the proper direction maybe versus an emotional decision making that you're currently, I think, doing. James from Naples, Florida. Are we in a stock market bubble like 2000? James, no. Let me give you an idea. Back in 2000, which probably a lot of people have already forgotten, uh, that was really the tech boom and bust. If you took a look at the overall market, the S&P 500 broad-based stocks, they were trading at about a 34, 35 PE price to earnings ratio. The NASDAQ type stocks were trading at like 89 to 90 PE ratios, crazy valuations. Right now, if you take a look at the S&P 500 as an example, it's trading at about a 16 to 17 PE price to earnings ratio to this year's numbers. Those are reasonable. Those aren't overvalued. What causes overvaluation is when people chase and speculate on certain issues. Sure, there's some stocks that might be grossly overvalued. I see a few technology stocks, not the overall technology market, but I do see a few stocks out there that are trading at 60, 70 P ratios that I would not want to really buy. But again, not everything is overvalued. There's a lot of good opportunity out there, and I don't see a bubble like 2000. Larry from Punta Gorda, Florida. Buy the dip, is this something you believe in? Larry, I do like buying the dip. Let me explain. Buy the dip is, is essentially um, if the market has a pullback for non-recessionary reasons. Let's just assume you know, you're going through this year and all of a sudden the market pulls back 6 or 7% drops because maybe there's a threat of a terror attack or maybe there's some talk about some political thing, what have you. As long as the economy's not rolling over and headed into a recession, yes, I like to buy the dip and we do at my firm. What you do not want to do is buy a false dip. If the economy is actually starting to roll over from being overheated, going into a recession, then you wouldn't, you'd want to be, obviously do proper research. So while we do not see recessions currently on the landscape coming ahead, um, what I will tell you is we would be buying the dip. If I start seeing a sign of recession, no, because again, we do a lot of research, I would not be buying the dip at that point in time. Folks, go to ResneyWealth.com. Check out our upcoming workshop tab for workshops in Fort Myers and in Naples. The disturbing facts you, the investor, are shocked to learn. What causes poor investment returns and excessive risk? People are shocked when they learn these at my workshops. Go to ResneyWealth.com. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. Is your broker working in your best interests or are you being sold inferior investments by Wall Street firms and annuity salespeople? My advice, never settle for bad advice if you value your financial and retirement security. Real money management, real advice is the difference my firm provides. Call us today and schedule a consultation.
Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. Again, of course, a great show today. A lot of good questions. Send your questions to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And I know we're, we were all always get a lot of calls and or emails about our upcoming workshops. Our workshops are designed for pre-retirees and retirees. If you're concerned about the advice you're receiving, some of the things I'm talking about in my show, maybe somebody sold you some annuities or they're trying to, or maybe you're retiring or maybe your returns aren't what you think they should be, or maybe you feel you're taking too much risk in your portfolio, attend one of my upcoming workshops, go to resneywealth.com, click on the workshop tab, you'll be glad you did. Sandy from Naples, Florida. Our investment accounts are, are all holding uh, mutual funds. I've heard you say negative things about uh, mutual funds, I assume is what you're saying. What are better investment vehicles? Sandy, great question. I talk about mutual funds a lot. I'm not a fan of most mutual funds. There's a few out there that are decent or good. But most mutual funds, I am not a fan. What's a better vehicle to invest in than a mutual fund? In our opinion, what's called an ETF, ETF, exchange traded fund. These have far uh, less cost structure, less expense ratio annually than most mutual funds. Uh, ETF is basically a vehicle. You can buy an ETF that owns gold. You can buy an ETF that owns the S&P 500 or small cap or emerging markets or government treasuries. There's virtually over a thousand ETFs. So do your own research, of course, but ones that will invest in all kinds of different investment sectors. So you can build a nice diversified portfolio out of ETFs at a lower cost structure. What, you, what I find is the vast majority of Wall Street firms, banks, and insurance people still like mutual funds more because it pays them either more commissions, uh, more fees, 12B1 fees, revenue sharing, different greedy uh, areas of the mutual fund area, in my opinion. So unfortunately, mutual funds are kind of uh, yesterday's investment vehicle. In our opinion, much better opportunity, a place to park money and diversify at a cheaper cost, ETFs, exchange traded funds. Tom from Fort Myers, Florida. My portfolio, approximately $1 million. I have three different accounts, mainly stocks, approximately 15 stocks in each. While I've done well as of late, my concern is when to sell. Tom, that's an excellent question. I will say this, and I've talked about this a lot on this show. Risk management is the most important part of money management. You know, you can buy something when the market's doing well and maybe have a chance to make some return. The problem you, the investor, faces is this. If you are not uh, managing the risk of your portfolio, whatever you made, you can give it all back and more. This is the crux of the problem. So when you're buying individual stocks or any investment, why are you buying that investment? What is the rationale, the reason? Is it earnings growth, revenue growth? When that changes, that should be the catalyst then to sell that investment. Too many investors, and again, our estimation, well over 90% of you have no risk management strategy. So your question is right in line with what I'm talking about today. No risk management strategy, not know when to sell, which most investors don't. They might write it up, but they write it down even further, and they become disgruntled with what happened to their money. Then they start selling things maybe at exactly the wrong time. So what I would say is this. If you can't manage the money yourself because you don't have the time, discipline, or talent, or you don't have the strategy, it's probably the time you call a real investment money management firm like Resdy Wealth Management to help manage and guide your portfolio. Because we do have the strategy, includes risk management, to manage the major risk like recession. We do the hard heavy lifting, the research. Call my firm, go to our website, resneywealth.com, schedule a consultation, you'll be glad you did. Bill from Marco Island, Florida. The U.S. energy sector is on an upswing. Invest in oil and how. Bill, I am not a big fan of investing in oil right now, and I'm going to explain why. Yes, the overall U.S. Uh, economy and the oil sector is on a boom, meaning producing more oil. The, the, that's good for the economy. It's not good for the price of oil. As I've talked about for the last three or four years, I firmly believe we are going to be stuck in about a $40 to $60 oil price and at that price, the big integrated companies don't make a lot of money. Some of the technology-driven parts of the oil service sector can make money. So I'm not a big fan of investing in oil. I think there's better opportunities. We've had a little bump up this year in oil prices. But again, I think oil prices are going to stay fairly low. And over time, if we produce more oil and gas, 
realistically, you might see oil prices even come down further than what I would project them to be. Look for other areas. Oil is one that I would really look at avoiding or selling at this current point. Sandy, Fort Myers, Florida. Should you make IRA contributions after 65? Sandy, yes, if you have earned income. So if you work for somebody, you have earned income, you can still do possibly a deductible IRA. So you wanna look at the, the tax rules, but you have to have earned income. No earned income, you can't do an IRA at that point in time. Mark from Naples, Florida. I own four different non-traded REITs and three have dropped in value by nearly 30%, but I can't get out. More pain to come? Probably, Mark. These are the, these are the investments to avoid. Annuities and non-traded real estate trusts. Garbage in, garbage out. Both of those products are sold under suitability by non-advisors. These are so-called advisors that care about the commissions they earn. And this is the problem. You've got an investment that's dropping in value, but you can't get out. Chances are it could be invested in the wrong kind of real estate like shopping malls. And if you've noticed, shopping malls are dropping in occupancy because people are buying online. The problem again with non-traded REITs, no liquidity, incredible uh, cost structure when you get into these things and you can't get out when you might need to get out. Folks, my advice, Never buy any investment that has either lockups or surrender penalties. Your money should always be 100% liquid. So if the investment you buy today starts changing tomorrow or 10 years from now, and the reason you bought it is changing, you can easily get out and exit. So this way, hopefully, you don't lose a lot of your money. Traded REITs and annuities are on my hit list of some of the worst investments sold by banks, Wall Street firms, and what I call the annuity charlatans of the world. Unfortunately, investors don't read the fine print and it hurts them a lot. Folks, I'm close to out of time. Real advice and real money management is the difference my firm provides. Experience the Resney Wealth Management difference. If you have a $500,000 portfolio and greater, get a second opinion. My advice, never settle for bad advice. Always put your interests first and make sure that your retirement is secure. Call us today, schedule a consultation, go to ResneyWealth.com, and don't forget to check out our upcoming workshops. We've got two, Fort Myers, Naples. Go to ResneyWealth.com, learn how to grow and protect your money from bad investment advice. Folks, I'm out of time. I'll see you next week.